Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex, and I'm here today to tell you how we can grow you a new lung. Now, I know this might sound a little bit like science fiction, but I'm hoping to show you how this is closer than you might think. So we've chosen to focus on lung for a few reasons. While we're actually getting better at treating most diseases, both lung cancer and end-stage lung disease continue to rise year over year. Oftentimes, the only treatment for these patients is to get a lung transplant, but these have some of the highest rates of failure, with mortality rates of over 50% in just five years. And this is due to a lot of reasons, but largely because the lung interacts with the immune system in a very different way and is very, very sensitive to someone else's DNA. Now, to come up with alternate approaches for this, what we have developed starts with a donor lung, just like a lung transplant. But then we treat it with a series of detergents and solvents to wash all of the cells away, leaving behind just the extracellular matrix, the structure of the lung, without any of the cells. Now, this is made up of collagen, which makes it strong, elastin, which makes it stretchy, and about 60 other proteins that are very highly conserved. Mine are the same as yours, and the immune system doesn't recognize them as foreign. Importantly, since this is a non-living tissue, it can be stored on the shelf for months at a time instead of only the four to six hours that you get with a donated lung. So when someone needs a new lung, we can take some of their stem cells, place it on the organ, and then place this into something called a bioreactor, which are a glass jar that I design that mimics certain key aspects of physiology in order to transform these cells on a scaffold into a functional organ. For example, providing a heartbeat is a cue for the cells in our vasculature to actually form a barrier. For our airways, cyclic stretch or breathing motions tells these cells, hey, there's blood and air and I need to form a barrier here. Starting with fluid helps these cells proliferate, but then taking that first breath of air actually helps this lung finish its development. And finally, levels of oxygen are really important too in order to make sure the cells have enough to survive, but not too much so that they actually try to turn into a different type of organ. Now, once it's spent about a week or two in this bioreactor system, we can see that it's done and ready and actually then transplant in this into another animal or into a person eventually. And at this point, you truly have your own organ. It's entirely your own DNA and stuff that is very, very highly conserved. Now, we have this mostly working with our rat model and are continuing to develop that, as well as our pig and primate models. And while it's still about 15 to 20 years before this can likely make it into man, we're hoping that in the near future, this science fiction can become a scientific reality. Thank you so much.